In today's video, I want to talk about arrays in JavaScript. There are a few functions that I want everybody to be aware of when working with arrays. All right. So let's first create a simple array, right? So I'm going to say here R equals an array with, let's say, a few numbers here, just one, two, three, and four. Okay, and I'm just going to console log this array. So whenever I'm executing this, we'll get the, the array here. Now I'm sure you all know about the push function, right? So if you push here, uh, let's say the number five, and if you run this, you'll notice that we get, well, what do you know? The five uh, digit at the end of the array, right? That's what push does, simple enough. Now, did you know that there's also pop? So you can pop a an element from the array. And if I run this, well, it deletes the element at the end of the array. So push and pop are like opposite of each other. Okay. And if you want to get what you actually extracted from the array, you can simply, uh, let's say result here equals that and you can actually print the result. So I'm just going to print it like this. And if we run this, you'll notice that, you'll notice that we get four here, right? So it makes sense. One more one more pair such as this is shift and unshift. If I try to, for example, shift this array, and let me also get the result here. You'll notice that we get one as, as the result itself. And we now got the first element from the array extracted from the array itself, right? And if you want to add at the beginning of the array, you can use R dot unshift. And let's add the number five here. And you'll notice that five has been added as at the beginning of the array. Simple enough, right? <clears throat> now there are a few more functions I want you to know when dealing with arrays and specifically checking some condition. If you want to check a condition for every single array, there are functions built into this. And they go like so. Let's take the result of that and say r dot and there's all there's first there's every so we can say every and this guy takes in a function or a callback whatever you want to give it. I'm going to give it a an arrow function and inside the arrow function the parameters the first parameter is the actual value. So I'm going to have the element here. Right? And I'm going to return element if the element is even, right? If the element is even, what's this going to print? Well, you'll notice that we get here false, right? So that's because in our array, let me actually get this properly. So in our array, this condition for every single element doesn't hold true because, well, what do you know? one is not an even number, right? You can do the same. If you want to check if one of the element has this condition, you can actually do dot sum. And if we run this, you'll notice that we get true here because one of the element is certainly um, even. And if I try to remove all the even numbers, well, what do you know? We get false, right? Now, the cool thing about these functions is that they actually know how to deal with empty arrays, right? If you implement your own logic, you might need to deal with that and it's, it can get co really complicated really fast. In this case, you don't have to do a thing. If this array, for example, is empty, what do you expect this to return? Well, it should technically return false because there's no element that evaluates this uh, condition to true, right? Same thing goes for every. So if I say here every this, you'll notice that we get true. That's because there are no elements, but that's the actual expected result since there are no elements. If, if there are no elements, that means that every single element, so no elements, actually evaluated that condition to true. So one more function that actually kind of modifies or gives you back a modified array is called map. So just map. And what this does is for every single element in the array, 
it does a certain operation and gives you back an array that modified every single element. So le let me let me actually exemplify what I what I'm saying here. So if I have here for each element, I want to return, for example, each element times two, right? So every single element I want doubled from my array, and I want my array to still be one, two, three, and four. If I try to print my result here, you'll notice that the first array is one, two, three, four. But the second one has all these numbers, but doubled. And not only you can actually modify every single element in the array, you can actually change the type completely. So if you want, for example, to instead get an object, you could. So let's see here. We're going to have to define here a lambda with brackets and then say return the object that has the name, I don't know, test and the age, let's say, 55 times our element here. And that's it. And now if I try to run this, you'll notice that the first, well, the first array is here, one, two, three, four, but the second one has four objects in them. And each object has the age 55 times, well, whichever uh, element was iterated at that point. So this one would have 55 times three. Right, so you get the gist of it. You can actually just transform elements from another element. This is useful, especially when you're trying to extract a certain value. Let's say you're iterating over an object that has the name and you want an array with all the names. You can do that by simply saying uh, return element.name in this case. And that's all I wanted to share with you guys. I know there are some people that still don't know about this and I want to make it clear that these must be used. Stop using for each loops for every single condition that you might otherwise be able to create using a an every call or a sum call and stop actually gathering all the attributes using a for each loop. You can actually use a map call. All right, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped and see you next time. Bye.